Hi guys, it's Roy from Belladoss 3D here with the second part of the Blender to Unity by Substance Painter tutorial in which I create a school locker in Blender, prepare it and import it into Substance Painter to paint and then prepare it and import it into Unity. So without any further to do, let's get to work. Okay, so what I've decided to do here is I'm going to re-unwrap it and I'm actually going to separate it into two materials. I'm going to have the main body of the locker, one material, and the doors on another material on, on separate textures. That will make it a lot easier to unwrap nicely for a substance painter. So here's how we left it in the last one. And as you can see, it's all on one texture sheet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the door. I'm going to press plus on the material and new. I'm going to change that to locker doors. And I'm going to double click that locker and main. And I'm going to press the minus button to take that off of that door. But if I click on there, it's still on there and it's, it's been renamed. I'm going to then select the other door and I'm going to take that off of there and add locker doors to that one. So I've now got two separate textures on there. Right, so let's start with the main body of the locker and in edit mode, select everything and press U and unwrap. And as you can see, it lays it all out a lot better on there. Not finished yet, we'll be moving it around, scaling it up, trying to make as much use of the space as I can. But I'm going to go back into object mode, select the top door and the bottom door. And with them all selected, press U and unwrap again. Again, a much cleaner unwrap this time. And then what I'm going to do is hover up my cursor over this window and press control and space. And what I will do is I'll be moving these islands around the screen, trying to get it all nice and neat so that it's all together using as much of the space on the screen as possible. There's not much I can do on this one. It's quite well done already. But uh, what I'll be using is the same keys as I would be using when modeling. If you want to move an item, you select it and you can press the L key to select the whole island. You can left click to select. You can shift left click to select multiple. You can control right click to select between two. And you can alt click to select a loop and so on. You can also change between vertex and edge and face with the one, two, three keys. You can press S to scale. Exactly the same. You can press R to rotate. Exactly the same. Except it's all in a 2D space and you're dealing with the with the, the texture UVs rather than actual geometry. So now that I've gone through that, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through both of these U sets of UVs, tidy them up and maximize space as much as possible. And for that, I'm going to fast forward. Okay, so now we have much better UV mapping there. Everything's been moved around, scaled and rotated to fit into the UV area with much better positioning and taking up as much texture space as possible. And there's the main one as well. Now there's just a couple of things I need to do to prepare the model to use in Substance Painter. And the first one is to sort out the normal directions in this model. As you can see, if you look in certain lights and the uh, faces, you can see that the smoothing bends them slightly. The edges there, they seem very sharp. And again, we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Add Modifier and select Weighted Normal. And as you can see, instantly you can see a difference there. The flat surfaces are flat. 
the bevels are nice and smooth and rounded and that's what the weighting modifier does what it does is it makes it so that the large flat areas exert more influence over the normal direction than the edges meaning that the they're flatter on the large flat spaces and the corners and edges are rounder so what we're going to do is we're going to add that modifier to each of the components and apply it and now that that's done as you can see it's much much better normal direction on that you can't see any erroneous reflections and it all looks nice and flat so there's one more thing we need to do before putting this into substance painter and it's to select both of these doors and move them to the right of the main body so g x 0.5 enter and there's a simple reason we do this when it's in substance painter the first thing you do is you bake the base mesh maps and one of these mesh maps is ambient occlusion and what ambient occlusion does it's a black and white grayscale texture that creates ambient shadows on the texture in cracks and crevices and ridges now if we were to bake it with the doors in position it would create shadow around the edge of the doorway of the locker and we want to take this into unity and in unity we may want to have these as separate pieces within the main object that can be manipulated and opened and if we've baked ambient occlusion inside the edges of the doorway when they're open it's not going to look right so what we've done is we move it away from the mesh so that there's no influence of the door over this mesh to create that ambient occlusion and so it won't paint it onto the texture and it won't look odd in unity so right now that we're ready what we're going to do is we're going to select each of the doors and then finally the main piece so let's export and we'll go over to file and we will select export and fbx and we only want the items that we have selected to go across so we click the selected objects tick box and let's find a location for it. We'll put it in our meshes folder in lockers. And we will just call it locker. And then hit the export FBX. And there we have it. That is now ready to be painted in Substance Painter. Right, now that we're in Substance Painter, it's ready to start painting. So first things first, let's import our model into Substance Painter by going to File and selecting New. And this brings up the new project panel where we can select our settings. There's only actually a couple of settings on here that you need to actually worry about for a, for a general workflow. You've got your template at the top and you can choose different templates, different types of PBR for different projects. I'm just going to leave it on select template and that will just give us everything available. And then when we export, we can choose a template to export. And under file you click select and that will bring up your browser and you can load your actual object into substance painter through there document resolution this is the resolution um, that you're working in it's not necessarily what you're outputting in but i like to choose 2k resolution on that normal map format this again because we can choose the output format isn't overly important but it's nice to work in whatever normal map format that you're going to be outputting in. Um, there's two, there's DirectX and OpenGL. And they're exactly the same formats, except they're inverted. I think it's on the green channel of the texture. So if you use a DirectX formatted normal map in software that uses OpenGL, you'll find that instead of ridges, you'll get indentations and so forth so i like to choose what i'm outputting to because ultimately although i'm working in blender i'm going to be putting it into unity and unity uses a direct x workflow i'm going to select direct x and that is everything that you need to select for a general workflow just hit ok and wait for it to load in and there you go let's have an overview of the ui as we see it okay so what we have here on the left we have our uv window that shows our uv map and how the textures look on the uv map we can actually change this from material to each of the different textures that are on there base color metallic as i haven't got anything on there at the moment they're showing as blank um, but they will show all the different textures that are on there on the right hand side here we have our 3d viewport and to navigate around the model you hold the alt button and you can left click to rotate 
you can middle click to pan and you can use the scroll wheel to move in and out you can also use the right mouse button up and down to move in and out and again you can change what materials are being displayed on the model at any one time or put it on a lighted material on the left we have two sections this section down the bottom here whatever you're clicked on in your layer list will show the properties for that item and you can make adjustments to all the different properties for example at the moment if I click on layers up there I'm on a single paint layer so this is just my brush the alpha for my brush all the different size flow you can even have a uh, size jitter angle jitter flow jitter and the, these these randomize your strokes you can choose how it wraps around the model and let's see if you come further down you can choose what material it affects so you can it can affect the color the metal roughness or any combination of those and again you got your base color you can change your color here you can actually change that to a material there metallic roughness and all these sliders here for different aspects of, of texturing i'm not going to go into detail with it but uh, because there's so much here this is you know hours worth of of um, tutorials going through just this section but above it we have three tabs our first tab is our texture set list now substance painter creates texture sets based on material so if you have one material um, in your model from blender it will create one texture set list if you have two materials as you can see here it will it will create two so these are actually separate uvs and materials um, we also have our layers tab and this is where we can stack all of our materials which we'll find down here you can drag them into here you can layer them you can change the order you can overlay them you can multiply them you can change their opacity and again that works in convergence with the properties panel down here and everything's got its own set of properties and the third tab is our texture settings and this um, chooses the texture sizes the the channels that we use for example base colors metallics roughness normals and it also it will also once we bake the mesh maps it will contain our base maps which are generated when it's um, baked right and down the bottom of the screen one of the most important areas of it is your shelf and this contains all of the different things that you can use within um, Souls of Painters. All of your alphas, your grunges, your procedurals, your textures, materials, smart materials, particles, brushes. Everything's all in here and it's all nice and neatly ordered. You can just filter down um, to the section that you want. You can search in the bar up here. And everything on here can be dragged off of here and either onto the model or into the layers okay and finally on the left hand side and across the top here you've got various different modes for example this is your painting mode erasing projection polyfills and smudging cloning and um, material picker are all along this side and along the top uh, again we've got some of the proper some of the um sliders that are in your property some of the most used ones like the size of the brush the flow of the brush opacity of the brush and spacing etc all along the top and i think that covers all of the basics for now so we'll move on to starting with the painting but before we actually start the painting we need to bake the textures on this as there's no normal details no information other than the mesh itself so let's go into texture settings and we'll click the bake mesh maps and again this brings up a window where you can bake all the maps that you need first things first i'm going to actually come back out of here because i've just noticed i don't have any ambient occlusion channel and this what ambient occlusion does as i mentioned earlier on this creates little shadows in corners and ridges and, and gullies um, just gives it a bit more definition. So I'm just going to click on plus 
and I'm going to choose ambient occlusion and there in my list is an ambient occlusion map so now let's go down to bank mesh maps and take a look at this to be honest when you're doing a basic normal workflow you don't need to change any of this except for the output size output size is quite important we change that to 2k 2048 all the rest of this all of this section here is actually working with transferring normal detail from high poly to low poly mesh in this workflow we're not doing that so we don't need to know about that but on the left hand side you've got all of the the common maps that are baked when you bake the textures and again each of these have got their own little parameters an id map we don't need that we don't we're not using an id map at the moment what an id map is is in blender what you can do is you can use vertex paint to paint the vertices of faces different colors and then when you bring it into substance painter you can actually use that to bake an id map so that you can add masks using the different colors it makes it easier if you've got lots of fiddly little pieces on on the model to be able to just select those pieces for painting rather than painting over the edges and things like that and again I mean, occlusion curvature position and they've all got their own settings on them but i i tend to find that the base settings are good enough to leave as they are so let's uh bake the selected textures and just wait for it to bake and as you can see it goes through each of the different textures displaying it one by one and it's finished with no errors by the looks of it so let's click ok and as you can see that just gives that a little bit more definition a little bit a bit more detail to it right so let's get started with the painting now this is created two texture sets and you, you work on each one separately you can't work on them at the same time unfortunately and so I'm going to do the doors first. So I'm going to select the doors and go to layers. I'm going to delete that default layout. I don't need it. And I'm going to start on the base material for the main part of the door first. So I'm going to create a folder. And I'm going to double click that and rename it to main paint. And let's see what we've got. I'm pretty sure if I go down to the materials panel here. And I make sure I'm on materials. I can put in here painted. And there we have it, we have a still painted. So let's drag that into this folder and see what happens. And there we go, it's uh, nicely filled and covered this whole model. Now we don't want this on every part of the model. So what we need to do is we need to mask this paint. And as I'm only working on the main part of it and not the little details like the fixtures, I'm gonna create a black mask by right clicking the folder not the material the folder if you do it on the folder then everything in the folder will use that mask so click add black mask and as you can see that's completely masked everything off and what this does black is transparent white is filled so i can then go right over to the left hand panel here and find the polygon fill click on that and that pops up this properties menu here and we've got four different modes for this the first one is a triangle fill that will fill any triangles that you've got and then polygon fill and that will fill if I go and say click on this piece here it will just fill that polygon just there like that and then we've got mesh fill and this will fill the whole of the mesh that's linked you know in blender when you press L to select linked mesh same thing as this so you click on that if I click on there you'll see that it's only filled the areas that are linked directly to that anything that's a loose part isn't filled so we'll keep that like that for now because we need that and then we have the final one which is uv island fill and what this does is where you've marked seams for example when i did the uvs i marked this piece here separately to this piece here so what that means is they're two separate uv islands so I can then click on here and you see it will only fill that island there. And you'll see on, on the UV map just here, that's that whole piece there, just there. And it's only filled that piece. So we now need to go through and fill the pieces that we want filled. So let's do this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece here. 
and we're in UV Island Select here. So it's all working. And as you see, because we're in UV Island, I've selected this piece, but the back piece hasn't been filled because it's a separate UV Island. So I'm going to go back to Polygon Fill. Uh, sorry, um, Mesh Fill. And I'm just going to fix that. And let's find the other last piece there. And let's have a look up there. Yeah, it's done the same up there. Right, so we now have our base metal colour on there. Now it looks a little bit clean and nice and, and uh, shiny. But uh, we'll sort that out in a minute. I'm going to hide that layer for now. Because I now want to go back to my search and put still. And I think I will have still rough. That would probably be the best. I'm just going to drop that in there, in that folder at the bottom there. And this is going to be my base metal material. And I'm not going to do anything with that. That's going to stay exactly the same as, as it is. And I'm going to add a smart mask. And uh, Let's see, where are the smart masks? There we go. And I think what I want to do is I need to add edge rusty. And I'm going to drag it over and hover it over the still painted and drop it on. And as you can see, it creates a mask and then it adds the, the different um, parts to it. But that only shows the edges for it, which is fine. Because what I want to do is I need to go into the mask editor. And I'm going to invert the mask. And that gives me worn edges like so. And they're a little bit thick. A little bit too much so let's see if we can adjust that i'm going to go to the grunge first and i'm just going to bring in the scale bring it in like so maybe a little bit like that and then i'm going to go through each of the mask editors and make changes to that, that and that ooh, that brings it in like so and lastly this one and that should allow that to come out like so. So there we, we have our painted door with worn edges right there. Could do with a little bit of rust on this, but we'll add that at the end um, over the top of everything because rust will go over the top of everything. But I think for now, we're not too bad on that. Let's have a look at the still painted again by clicking on the little blue piece here, um, the actual material. And we've got a setting here for rust. Let's see what happens if we dial that up and we bring it right the way up. And there we go. It adds quite a bit of rust onto that. That's actually quite good. I'm quite pleased with that. Maybe a little bit less. There we go. And that looks like our base material. Now we just need to change the colour. I don't like this blue. It's it's a bit meh. <laughs> so let's click on the paint colour there. And I'm going to make it a green colour. And I've already got a colour prepared for this. And let's have a look. I've got some numbers here. Let's go down to our hue. And we'll change that to 395, 0.395. And then let's go down to our saturation. We'll paint, we've got that spot on, 694 and 200. And I think that's a nice institutional green for a school locker. At least that was the sort of colour they were when I was at school. I don't know what they are like nowadays. I suppose they're different in every school. Um, but that's the colour I always associate with school lockers. So that's the colour I've chosen. Right, so that's the base material done. Now we need to look at the fixtures. And on the door, the fixtures we have are the locks, the door handles, and the hinges, and this little nameplate in here. So let's do the nameplate first. Um, so I'm going to close down this folder. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to create a new folder and drag that right up to the top out so it's out of that folder. I'm going to name that fixtures. And let's see, I don't have a paper or cardboard material, but I can fake one and I can use, for example, let's have a fabric bamboo. I know it's not the same as paper, but 
drag it into that that folder there and what I want to do in this case I want to add a black mask onto the actual material and not the folder because the fixtures there's lots of fiddly little bits and I'm going to keep them all in one folder um, so I just want to make sure the black mask is on the um, UV chunk fill and just click on this piece here and let's find the other one and do that and of course that doesn't look great at all but if I go into the material and I scroll up and I go to the scale I can go 50 on the scale and look at that that looks so much more like a bit of cardboard a bit of paper or something like that and I can even go in and change the color on it but I think I'm actually going to change that material I'm not too keen on that material it's okay um, but let's go fabric knitted and again because it's scaled up it look it looks like a piece of piece of paper I just need to change the color slightly I'm gonna bring up the uh, color picker switch to dynamic so we can see the hue range and I'm gonna bring that up to a sort of yellows about there and then I'm just gonna drag that along and look, just change that color so it's a bit more papery and there we go okay and then I'm going to do something the, the fabric color bottom I'm just gonna darken that right up gives it a bit of a shading to it okay so that's that done now what else needs I think with the handle I'm gonna use painted steel again or maybe even a coated steel let's see I've got a coated steel yeah there's a coated coated metal there I'm gonna drop that into the fixtures not too bad and I'm going to add onto that a black filter and again I'm going to use the mesh fill and click on the handle and that will give me the handle there I'm going to click back into the material because I need to change that material color it's not that great I'm going to give it a green color but I'm going to make it a darker green than than the rest just to make it pop and show over the top of it and I'm just going to increase the scale of that to maybe three makes it look a little bit smoother if you look in close it actually blurs it but it makes it look a little bit smoother and I think the handle would be quite smooth so I think yep that's the handle and the rest of the features I think I'm just going to have um, all the same color I've got a still rusted in here somewhere so still rust and there we go and we'll drag that into the fixtures folder like so and create a black mask right click add back mask and I'll use the um, UV chunk fill for this because this is uh, just want to get the outside of this just like so and that one because what I want to do is that that piece right there in the middle I want to do a darker color okay and I forgot to um, select that so let's go back up to our coated metal filter and mesh fill select that now back down to our steel and rusted and we'll keep it on mesh fill for now if we go in there and select these pieces and let's do our hinges the same color two three four five and six and I think I'm going to switch it to uh, UV chunk fill and I'm going to do this piece in here in the darker color because what I'm going to do if I come out of that you can't see the contrast right now oh I've actually done the wrong color on that I think yes I have I want it that one so I'm gonna select that mesh on that uh, UV UV chunk fill and select inside there and do the same yeah and select inside there so now when we look at it we come out of it and I think that's looking quite good we can add a little bit more grunge and I'm going to add some 
decals to that okay, so let's start adding some decals let's make it look like it's been abused first things first i'm going to rotate round so it's roughly in the front position and then it while still holding the alt and, and moving i can press shift and it will snap it into direct front view and then i can go up here and i can select orthographic view and if i press f now that will refocus so i can now move around in front of graphic view like so and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a couple of stickers and some graffiti on these and the way i'm going to do that is I've got a folder here with some bits and pieces that I've downloaded that I, I will be adding to the model. Um, so I'm going to select a few of these chat textures uh, with control and left click. Uh, take that one. Uh, that one. And maybe that one. Yeah, that should be enough. And I'm going to drag them into the shelf like so and i can move that away and what will happen is, is the import panel will pop up with a list of all the items you're importing you need to choose how substance painter is going to use them so by clicking on undefined you can choose whether they're alpha color environment texture these are textures i'm going to use them as textures um no i'm not sorry the graffiti i'm going to use as alphas so the three graffiti i'm going to use as alphas and the rest I'm going to use as textures like so and then down here before you can import you have to choose how you're importing what you're importing it to and you get the choice of the current session the current project or the shelf itself now I always recommend don't import everything to your shelf because then it's there in your shelf all the time no matter what project you're loading and it just bogs down the um the shelf it makes things load load slower if you have too many textures and things in so i always bring them in into either the current session or the project so i'm going to bring it into the project and press import and there they appear in our shelf there um these are temporary in the shelf they'll only appear in this project whenever you load this project so what we're going to do is we're going to close this down i'm going to create another folder and move that right up to the top i'm going to call this one decals and with these ones, I'm going to create a paint layer, just there, and put that into the folder. And as you can see, we've got our, our property for our paint. And right now, it's it's set to white, and you can paint like so on the model. Simple as that. Now, I can actually change that there by going to the base color, and I can paint with one of these decals so let's take this one here and drop it into the base color like so and if i do that you can see it paints on there it's a little bit faded and 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 such at the moment um but actually that's quite good because then what i can do i can put scratches on that make it look like this sticker's been torn off so what we can do is we'll find a nice place for that sticker by using control and the left mouse button up and down you can rotate this the um the brush as you can see it's going around with the right button and the control up and down you can change the size of the influence of flow and with the control button and the scroll wheel you can change the size of the actual stamp so let's put it to about this size i'm going to bring the influence all the way out so it's a bit sharper and click just there and i think that looks quite good like that now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over to the eraser and i'm going to go to brushes and i'm going to find a scratchy sort of maybe something like something like this and click on that and as you can see it changes in there and then that's way too big let's bring it down and what we can do is we can go over this and scratch it all up and then it makes it look a little bit like it's it's a sticker that's been torn and scratched just like that and then what we do is we do exactly the same thing the other decals
And there we have it. There we have stickers on our door. And let's put some graffiti on now. And we're going to use a similar sort of method. And But I'm going to go to brushes. I'm going to choose a basic hard brush. And then back to alphas. And find my graffiti, which is there. And I'm going to add that first one just there like that. Now I want to bring up the size of the brush there. And now if I stamp that on there, I've still got my um, sticker in there. So let's control Z and delete that out of there. When you're painting on layers, once you've put it in, or once you've painted, um, changing the materials and everything in here won't change what's already been painted. Whereas with um, fill layers, changing the fill layer will change what's already been painted so let's have a look at this and boom and we're painting that in white so let's change the color of that so let's go down to there and i want to make this a nice bright red and what i'm going to do is because i want because the alpha is not brilliant there's a it, it kind of outlines the the uh the actual square of the the alpha which I don't really want to do. Um, let's see if... No, that doesn't work. No, the influence doesn't work on that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer um, for this because what I want it to do... No, wrong one. Create a new paint layer in there. Because what I want to do is I want to overlay this and um, reduce the opacity of it to blend it in more, to make it look more, more like it's painted on the surface. So with that, let's go boom on there. And notice it's retained all the properties of the previous, previous layer. This is independent of the actual um, layer that you're using. So you can switch between layers and still use the same settings. Right now, as you see, it's a bit too bright, it's a bit too clean, and we've got a bit of shadowing from the, the mask itself. So let's go up here and let's try screen. That would be an interesting one. And let's go and reduce that right the way down. And to about there should do it. And there, as you can see, it looks like it's been painted onto the surface. Um, looks much more realistic like that. So let's do a bit more graffiti. We've now finished the door to our locker. As you can see, lots of damage to it, lots of dents, lots of rust, and lots of graffiti. So let's close these down and start on the main part of the locker. And to do that, what we need to do is go up to Texture Set List and click on Locker Main. And let's bring this out just a bit, if I can get it. It's a bit hard sometimes to catch that. There it is. Bring that out and zoom it out a little bit. And as you can see, it's a completely different set, UV set. And if you go to Layers tab, different layers as well. Uh, it doesn't carry on the layer over the layers from one object to the other. So let's delete that. And I want the same material for the background, back of this, the main material for this. On this so there's one way I can do that I, by going back to set set list go to lock doors into layers again and right clicking the folder for the main part of the paint and selecting create smart material and that will load up your materials 
um, smart materials um, folder and there it is there right there so we'll go to texture set list, list back to main and onto its layers and literally just drag it over now that doesn't look quite right yet because obviously it's still using the mask from the previous model so if I right click and clear mask I can then make sure the mask is selected go to the um, mesh fill and just click on all the meshes in the model and it's as simple as that it's it's done I've now copied the color over from one to the other and that's our model finished it's very basic it's very simple I hope you're able to understand there's not a lot to substance painter it may seem very uh, daunting when you first look at it but it is a very good very very good piece of software and once you learn the basics it is very easy to use so let's export the textures and we do that by going to the file menu and selecting export textures right so first things first we need to choose where to save these textures so let's click on there and navigate to our textures folder this is actually already on my textures folder thank you and select folder and then we need to choose the output template and this is what files you need for your specific renderer um, for unity it's the unity Ver universal render pipeline for blender it will be a basic pbr metallic roughness so we're going to choose the unity universal render pipeline metallic standard and i'll show you what's in that let's go to the output template and scroll down click on the unity universal render pipeline and that shows you that it's going to output per texture set four textures and the first one's going to be the albedo transparency and that contains all your color in the rgb channel and your opacity in the alpha channel and then the second texture will be a metallic smoothness texture and in the rgb that contains your metallic and in the alpha channel that contains your glossiness which is um, basically your roughness um, because unity is is quite good with textures it reads um, it allows you to pack different textures into one and it will read it from the different channels um, which is great because it reduces the overhead of the size of the um, files uh, etc and we've got our normal map in our RGB channels there and and we've got the emission there which that will not generate as far as I know because we have no emissive materials so let's go back to the settings we've got all of our settings set we choose the um, file type I'm going to choose PNG always go with PNG uh, that's just a personal preference it also depends on what you're rendering it in your size again I've chosen 2048 you need to choose the size that you want for your project and I'll leave the padding as it is and click export and there we go that's it they're exported all of our all of our textures we should have eight textures in the uh, texture folder so let's open the output directory and see and there we have it one two three four five six not eight because it didn't do the emissive because we haven't got any emissive and we've got our two color our two metallic smoothness and two normal there okay now let's close this down and make sure we save it and i haven't saved it yet which is a bit naughty 3d video do, 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 lockers and I'm going to save that under textures and just call it locker. Now we can come back to that at any time and make changes as we need them. But now that we've got the textures and we've got um, the model, let's go back into Blender quickly and we will um, prepare the model for exporting to Unity. Okay, now we're back in Blender. There's just a couple of things we need to do to prepare it for Unity. First things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename all the objects. So let's click on the main part. So double click it and rename it to Locker Main. And then click on the top door and we'll call that Locker underscore door 
top. And the same with the bottom one. Copy that. Paste it and call it bottom. So that's the naming sorted. What we also need to do is to need to move the doors back into position um, before moving it into Unity. So we'd select both doors and press G, X minus 0 0.5. Sorry, I'm pressing all sorts of buttons with my fat thumbs there. <laughs> now they're back into position. We'll shift click the main part of it. And now we can export it. So we go up to File, Export, FBX. We need to navigate to the folder where we're going to save it. So I'm going to save it in my Nesh's folder, Meshes folder and Unity Export. I'm going to save it as lockers.fbx. And then we need to limit to selected objects only because we don't want to need we don't want to bring the camera and the light into the scene. I actually did that earlier on a practice run and it caused all sorts of issues. So make sure you're limited to selected ob objects only. And let's go down to apply scalings and click and select unit scale. And then click on the tick box for the apply transform. And now what this will do, this will, this will take this from Blender to an FBX which will load into Unity at the correct scale and, and rotation because um, there is an issue with the default where it, was, it rotates the model at the wrong angle uh, in Unity and it just it doesn't really make much difference but it just changes thing if you if you're trying to use a script to interact with an object it changes angles and rotations um, so it may cause a bit of confusion so if you select apply scalings unit scale and apply transform that fixes that for you automatically then you just click export fbx and now we're ready to go into unity okay and we have a fresh scene here for unity nothing in it except for the default uh, objects and let's bring our model in and with unity importing models is absolutely simple all you have to do is you take your folder, you navigate to your lock, your um, object, and you drag it in. It's as simple as that. And there it appears, right there on there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on here and create a folder. And we call that Materials. And do the same and create another folder called Textures. This is just for organisation. Um, you don't have to do this, but... It's always great to be um, organized. And I'm also going to do another folder and call it meshes. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that down. That's our locker. I'm going to drag that into our meshes folder and go down into that. Now, if I open up this little arrow here, it shows you all the components. And it will, it will show you the, um, the, the different meshes within the components. And in you notice we've got the two materials. So what we need to do, at the moment, we can't actually edit those materials. They're locked because they're fixed inside. So what we need to do is we need to break them out of the model. So we select both of these materials, right click and extract from prefab. It will now bring up a browser menu. And what we want to do is go back to our materials and select the folder. And that will remove the materials from this mesh. If we go back to assets and go into materials, our materials are right there. And when we click on them, you can now edit them. And what we need to do now is add our textures. So let's go back to our texture folder there and let's find our textures, uh, locker textures, and we will bring them in like so and just drag them in. And it's as easy as that. It's just dragging things in. You, there's no special trick to it um, one thing i do recommend though before adding these to a material click on your normal maps and you'll notice uh do, 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 texture type here change that from default to normal map and then apply and again with the other one default to more normal map and apply and that just fixes some glitches um 
make makes it more compatible with unity so let's go back to our assets and our materials and we'll start with the door material and what I'm going to do because what happens is now if I go back here and I go back there and I accidentally click on something it, it removes the uh, the display of the properties and we need to keep that properties up there because we're going to be dragging stuff into it so go back to materials click on the material and this is the door material and you see a little padlock just up in the right hand corner there tick that so now no matter what we pro we click on it will keep them properties there so we can now go to the textures and we can take our door material um, our color material and drop it into the albedo slot and then take our metallic smoothness and drop it into the metallic smoothness slot now I always reduce the slider on the smoothness even though I'm using a smoothness map texture I change it to 0.8 because I find what happens is, is when that slider is at maximum it seems to darken the material for some reason and again next to the albedo you've got a color color picker on there pick on that and make that make sure that that num that is pure white so we just need to drag it right up into the, drag the little circle right up into the corner um, otherwise it tends to tint the model and make it a little bit dark for some reason um, then we need to drag the normal map in there and that's our material set so now what we need to do is unlock that because we don't need to stick to that one go back to our materials click on the locker main lock it and drag our textures into the right slots and we just change that up a bit there we go to do that goes into that one 0.8 and that one goes into that one there and there we have our materials set up so now what we need to do back to the mesh and if we click on the mesh and turn that padlock off so we can actually see the mesh um, you've got a few tabs here model rig animation let's go to the materials tab and you'll see that there are two uh, material slots here now sometimes it might say that it's a missing material so what you need to do is is need to go back go into the materials obviously you need to lock the mesh like so and go back into the materials and then just drag those onto there like so um, it didn't do that this time fortunately so uh, we were lucky there anyway let's go back to where the mesh is and we can now use that mesh in Unity. So let's just click and drag it into our hierarchy up here. And you see it appears up here. And if you open it up, you can see bot door bottom, door top, and the main. And as you can see, we can see it in the scene right there. And let's have a look, see what it's like. Okay, and we're going around, yeah. And that's looking really nice. Um, let's, uh, yep, that is looking very nice. That is very nice. And of course, you can actually select your very um, your different um, parts of, parts of the model. You've got the main the main model itself, and then you can, if you click and then click again, select each of the doors separately. When you've got it on the blue outline, what? What that means is that uh, the whole model is being manipulated. If you click it again, it goes to an orange outline, and that's the individual module model being manipulated. So I could literally go to this door here, double click it so it's highlighted in orange. I could press E to go into rotation mode, and then using this little green slider, I can rotate it like so. And then I can do the same with this one here, and rotate that slightly like that and we have our doors open and if I wanted to you could I could write a script which could manipulate those doors so that when you walk up to them you point the cursor at them and left click and it opens each individual door and that's why we left it as separate objects within one model and that's why we put the pivot point on the edge here because at the moment it's pivoting on this edge here which is exactly what we need for a door well that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please hit that like button and let your friends know all about it. Um, if you want to see more content like this, then 
hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ring the notification bell so that you know if anything's coming out. And I'd like to thank you for joining me. I hope to see you in the next video.